as a young child, and I'm going to say under the age of five, just for a point of reference, I remember, you know, laying on the grass, you know, I can still see myself, you know, like with your your chin resting in your arms, you know, the palms of your hands and your feet up behind you and just having conversation, singing with the fairies. They, <laughs> I want to say it's like they like to do little tricks and, and play and have fun, which I think that's where that fairy energy lovingly supports everybody is bringing that silliness and that fun and that playfulness back into our lives. They can be very serious too, mind you, but they, they're really good at the other part. So I also remember as a young child seeing what I called then ghost people because I would see energy around people, but as a you know young child, you know who do you talk to about that? I probably talked to my mom or my dad, more likely my mom, but you know how do you explain or understand something like that when you don't have – um, a foundation of information around that. Then we had the big earthquake here in 1965, and I remember after that, and it was kind of a traumatic um, event for me because we were at the daycare place, and all this stuff came tumbling down. I don't think I was injured, but I remember all this stuff and a lot of fear coming up. So after that point, I remembered having these really cool nighttime reoccurring dreams but all the way up into my teens my mid-teens of at night going out to the little playhouse in the yard stepping inside rolling up a carpet lifting a trap door and climbing down a ladder into like the edge of the forest and the meadow where I would go off and and play with the fairies and have fun and create things and um I think that's why I also am a very creative person and an artist, and I love making stuff. There's a whole kinesthetic thing of making things with my hands that's really healing for me and and fun, and fun for the people that purchase or, you know, get to play with this stuff that once it's done. So from there, in my early 20s, I'm going to say, I started, maybe late teens, I started really being drawn to studying astrology or getting an astrology reading and a tarot reading and and all of that and in my early 20s I started recognizing that I knew stuff that meaning like I was getting psychic or intuitive hits or getting information but I didn't know because I hadn't grown up in a family that that was the norm I left organized religion when I was 12 years old (laughs) Because I went to Bible camp and I was just so, I felt like I was in another dimension just observing all of the crazy that went on from my perspective at that time and basically went home and said, I'm not doing this anymore. And my mom, thankfully, was in agreement to that. And uh, so in my 20s, you know, hearing, seeing, getting information and started being drawn to study more about that. And in my late 20s, Saturn return, first Saturn return, I had a health crisis that really propelled me to going deeper into studying herbs and iridology and muscle testing. I was already, you know, kind of working in the metaphysical realms, but it was really my physical body was having challenges because I'd been diagnosed with cervical cancer and I was having reoccurring problems. So it was just one of those life challenges. With the herbs and all that stuff, my body shifted and turned around. But then what was left was this big old whopping, my body's betrayed me energy. And I needed to find tools and ways of dealing with that. So then I'm being guided down a path of um, looking for different modalities. So with spiritual response therapy was one of my first trainings back in the early 90s. And then, you know, moving into EFT, and I'm a Reiki master and all kinds of stuff over this last 20 years. But it's really the fact that I personally had to go through these life challenges, like we all do, that instead of just succumbing to that energy and thinking, okay, I'm going to have a problem or whatever for the rest of my life, it was like looking for the tools and the answers to make it different to make my life different, to not have this feeling of betrayal and all this emotional stuff that was pent up from whatever, this lifetime or a previous lifetime. So as I've aged, um, now into my 50s, mid-50s, it's like I'm also a Gemini, so if I bounce around a little bit, I hope people can follow me because it's it's just my nature. But um, as a Gemini, I'm also a lifelong learner, so I'm always open to receiving new information, learning new things, And the beauty of my connection with my guides now is like they're the best teachers, especially 
in working with clients. Like so much really cool information comes through on helping that particular client address an energy or an issue that then I can share with a lot of other people. So I just feel very, very blessed um, with that. Um, hard point technique that we're going to talk about tonight started on the planet. I'm going to say Rebecca Marina brought it in maybe around 2008, 2009, offered the first certification training late um, 2010. And I've take, I took every training that she offered. There's a handful of us that are masters that have gone through the, all the requirements. Uh, it took me a couple of years to do all of that, a lot of traveling to the classes. And it's been such a blessing because it's really about working with the light. So this is where this light alchemy and light alchemist energy comes in because we're calling forth what it is that we need for healing. What it is for me, what it is for anyone else listening is going to be a little different. But the beauty is even if we're not completely conscious or feeling like we know what it is, our non-physical teams know exactly what we need and we'll create these energy packages and we'll do some of that today during our call that it'll be right and perfect for each person. And that's why I love this work so much because I get to facilitate just holding space and calling in the energy, and everybody receives the blessing. 